wiring an LS Swap 1980 Camaro in 10 minutes. Dillon's 1980 Camaro has all new wiring. There's a painless performance wiring harness, a Chevrolet E-Rod engine control harness, an MSD atomic transmission controller, VHX electronic gauges, vintage air air conditioning, and many smaller electrical components. This schematic shows the connections between these components. Right now, I'm just showing you that it exists. We'll do a deep dive on everything involved in wiring the Camaro in subsequent videos. But now, I'd like to show you the complete wiring of a 1980 Camaro in under 10 minutes. I'm gonna show everything that happened at the front of the car first. That's the engine compartment and nose area. Then I'm gonna show the interior and then I'm gonna show what happens in the trunk. Even though in real life, those things were kind of mixed together. What's happening now, or what Dylan did first, was to separate all the painless performance wiring into the bundles and route it in the general areas where it's supposed to go. That's still taking place right now on your screen. Then you start making individual connections. That major red wire that Dylan is working on is the power connection to the alternator. Um, the, this is 12 volts that charges the battery and powers the full-time 12 volt circuits. And now you see him routing some wires up and over the wheel well, underneath the fender, up to the front of the car that uh, you can see that he's wired up some of the headlight circuits. And now we are starting to attach a lot of the engine harness. And now you can see Dylan is working on the engine fuse relay box. We made several modifications to this box, including fixing the way the relays was wired from the factory they were wired with the relay positive and negative connections reversed. Um, also, we added a second relay to power a second cooling fan uh, next to the radiator and uh, added some fuses for our air conditioning and, and for that second electric fan. So there were a number of modifications to that fuse relay box, um, but what we were after is what we ended up with, which is a very clean look where it could have come that way from the factory. Now you'll see the wheel wells and fenders going on and off. That's because we had to figure out where are we routing these wires? How can we keep them hidden as much as possible? You know, we wanted to end up with the cleanest look that we could. And yet um, the wheel wells needed to come off a lot. For one thing, it's easier to get to some of the stuff, especially on the passenger side where we mounted the engine computer. You can see there's a silver looking object that has some a bunch of fins those are cooling fins that is the engine control computer that's where we mounted it what dylan is doing now is he's cleaning up some of the engine harness wiring um, against the advice of our chevy dealer um, we decided that we were going to shorten a bunch of the engine harness wires that were way too long um, because we know what we're doing and and know how to uh, cut a wire and put it back together and get a good connection. Um, everything worked perfectly. We had no problems when it came time to start the engine with any bad connections or anything like that. And I don't think that we ever will. What Dylan's doing now is routing that power that originates at the alternator, routing it along the firewall, routing it over to the engine fuse relay box area. Okay, what Dylan's doing right now is he's rerouting the wires that activate the purge solenoid. The purge solenoid is supposed to be mounted on the front of the passenger side head per the engine instructions, but because of the way the Holly accessories mount, we weren't able to mount it there, so we chose to relocate it to the firewall. Um, so we had to kind of pluck those wires out of the engine harness and reroute them along the firewall over to our new mounting location. I talked to some Colorado emissions uh, inspection guys and they said that was perfectly fine. So. Doesn't mean it's legal for you to do it, but for us, I did get a green light ahead of time. Um, now Dylan is coming in and wrapping all of the wiring in protective wiring wrap. Um, this is a good idea. It's, uh, it's some pretty good stuff. We didn't buy the most expensive stuff that you can buy, but we did get some nice looking stuff that is heat tolerant and should do a good job. Um, now Dylan is doing some final buttoning up of the wiring around that fuse relay box and you can see him popping under the car and back and under the car and back uh, there was a lot of uh, stuff to do both on top and on the bottom of the car 
and now he's doing some final wiring um, up at the very front, wiring up a couple of brand new horns, and we had to provide wiring for both the power and the ground for those horns, so that's what he's doing there. Now we're shifting over to the interior. Um, just like in the engine compartment, you start out with this huge bundle of wires from the painless performance harness, and first thing you gotta do is kinda separate them out. Separate the ones that go off to the trunk area and separate out the ones that run inside the dash. One thing you can see just sitting here looking, if you look inside the dash, you'll see that there is a rectangular box with green strips on the top and the bottom. That is the controller for our VHX gauges. There's a bunch of things that need to be sensed, um, like oil pressure, temperature, etc., where you run wires to that box, and then out of that box there's a single cable, it's just a regular old ethernet cable, that runs to the gauges that are actually mounted in the dash. It's a super clean way to do it. And uh, I'll just say right now, I really like the VHX gauges. I like the way they look. I like the way they're architected. And um, I have nothing but good to say about our VHX gauges and the decision to buy them. What Dylan's doing now is routing a whole bunch of individual wires that run to various things inside the dash from the, uh, the fuse area, um, which is kind of where everything and that painless harness originates. Um, he's routing them over to the various spots where they go. Um, obviously this is way too fast for me to talk about any individual wires, but um, you can see in general, there he's trying on the dash. Uh, I'm sure there were some things that are mounted to the dash, to the front gauge panel that we needed to see how long the wires needed to be. Um, Not sure what he's doing at this moment, but he's obviously routing some, a bunch of things that run along inside the dash over to the central area. There's a lot to do down at that at the fuse area. I mean, you start out with this huge bundle of wires there, and everything has to be routed somewhere. What he appears to be doing right now is working on um, connecting some of the wires that connect to that red box. That red box is our uh, atomic transmission controller. Another thing you can see here is underneath where the stereo mounts, there is a additional panel that we put in that has uh, it has several things. It's, it's got a simple switch that controls the VHX gauges. It's got some toggle switches which um, we didn't even have a, necessarily a plan for every single one but we thought hey it would be nice to be able to control some extra stuff. Uh, look at the sun moving there. You can actually see the, the rays of sun moving across the car. This is sped up 300 times this is 10 second time-lapse photography, meaning one snapshot every 10 seconds. Normally there are 30 frames per second, including what you're watching right now. So if you work that out, that means there, this is sped up 300 times faster than real life. What you see Dylan doing now is putting protective sheathing on the wires that run to the back, you know, in the trunk, and also the ones that are under the dash. Putting it on the ones under the dash is certainly not mandatory. It is a protected area, but it helps give a much cleaner look. It helps organize them, and I think the things that are well organized and protected are also easier to work on. So you'll see him hopping up under the dash and, and doing a bunch of protection on the wiring that's up underneath there. Now Dylan's working on the switches that go in the dash panel uh, on the left side. That would probably be the wiper motor controls and the squirter control and the headlight switch. Now he's working on wiring up the retro sound stereo. And now we're moving to the trunk. The main thing that needs to be wired in the trunk is all of the tail lights. There's about 10 individual lights that need to be wired there. All of the sockets for those on this car were horrible and nasty and didn't make good connections. We replaced all of them. And now the lights work really good. So there's exactly one more thing to do. It's wiring up the stereo speakers. This is the driver's side. This is the passenger side. And done.
I hope this overview was helpful. Thank you very much for watching.